Hey guys, it's Greg. Welcome back to the channel. Today, let's talk about truth because it's getting hard to come by these days. And if you haven't seen it making the rounds on social media yet, there's plenty to be angry about. Let's start with the Lutheran denomination having gone completely off the rails. Have you seen the so-called Sparkle Creed? It says Jesus has two dads and then the pastor prays to the rainbow spirit. I don't think so, Tim. Or maybe... You've seen Robert Kennedy Jr. recently doing a town hall where he cites a lawsuit that he won against the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. He proved in court that in the last 32 years, there has not been a single vaccine safety done, despite the endless stream of denial from the government. Not one, despite the law that was signed in 1986 by Ronald Reagan, stating a safety study must be performed every other year. Now, mind you, that the government has never, that has never been enforced by the government upon the vaccine manufacturers. Robert Kennedy is sharing this truth bomb in a town hall and the supposed moderator couldn't help stepping out of her role as a facilitator of the event in order to rebuke RFK and call him a liar. Now the facts were stated, they were specifically cited and sourced, and the host simply refused to allow him to get away with it. There was even a doctor in the audience who was not cherry-picked, I'm sure, who asked the question, what is it going to take to get you to come to our side on this issue? Not, why do you believe what you believe? Not, are you aware of these facts that you may not have considered? No. When are you going to drink the Kool-Aid with the rest of us? Now, those are some real-world, not hypothetical, dreamed-up scenarios that are happening right now, as terrifying as that is. And as I said in the beginning, the truth is hard to come by. Something that the world is doing against the people of God is shocking us into apathy. We used to be so grossed out by homosexuality, but thanks to butt light, the bar has been moved. And now we're really angry about Target trying to sell child abusing bathing suits. And you know what? Rightfully so. But because the shock bar has been moved, you know, now we're not quite so bothered about homosexuality becoming widely accepted. And this is a brilliant strategy by the enemy. Keep pushing the shock value, and then whatever is behind the bar becomes less egregious. And this works because most people allow society to tell them what is acceptable. And you know what? Almost everyone determines morality by what they feel is right or wrong. Proverbs 30 verse 12 says, There are those who are clean in their own eyes, but are not washed of their filth. The problem is, is that we're looking at the world through our own eyes. Yahweh actually commands us not to do that. Deuteronomy 12, 8 says, you shall not do this. That is, whatever is right in your own eyes. The people of God, we're called to have the mind of Christ. Yeshua prayed, not my will, but yours be done. And Hosanna by Hillsong has this great line, break my heart for what breaks yours. This mentality says, it doesn't matter if it bothers me. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't bother me. It's not about me. It's not about my culture. It's not about how I was raised or my political affiliation or how much money I make or where I live or any of those things. What matters is how the Father sees it. A righteous person knows that in judgment, the time should fit the crime. If you steal something, Scripture says you're required to return it and add 20%. And if you kidnap someone, the penalty is death. Now, I'm on board with that. Anyone who steals someone else's child has forfeit their life. Now, you might agree with that, and you might not. But this video is about truth, not opinions and agreement. Let's quote Paul in Romans 3. Let God be true, but every man a liar. He is truth. His opinion is not up for debate. He sees kidnapping as something so bad, it deserves the death penalty. And you know what? So should you. In God's eyes, homosexuality is an abomination. And he doesn't throw that word around arbitrarily. It's reserved for things that are particularly evil. See, here's the thing. He also says eating unclean meats like pork, shrimp, and lobster are an abomination. He prescribed the death penalty for the man who picked up sticks on the Sabbath. Now you might not see eating barbecue or working on the Sabbath as a big deal. The thing is, that in itself is a sin. 
God commands us not to look at the world with our own eyes. It's a big deal to him, therefore it's a big deal, period. In Hebrew, the word truth is emet. Now let's take a look at Google Translate and demonstrate that. So I'm on the web page here, and what I'm going to do is just type the word truth in English, and now we see in Hebrew, emet. it's emet. Okay, Hebrew is written from right to left, and this word emet is spelled aleph mem tav. Now, I was doing a study on the word and looking at the letters of the word to see if I could find truth in them. In Hebrew, this word emet, it's special. It's special because it starts with the first letter of the alphabet. Now, I'm going to flip it over here so I can work with it. The first letter is aleph, and the last letter is tav. Remember reading in Revelation, I am the Alpha and the Omega? Well, Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters in Greek. In Hebrew, this would say, I am the Aleph and the Tav. And the center letter is Mem, uh, which is actually the center letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So, this is really cool. The Hebrew word truth encompasses the beginning, the middle, and the end. And this is a beautiful representation of truth. Now, this only works if the scripture backs it up. It does. Psalms 119.160 says, The totality of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous rules endures forever. God is truth. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the word truth, it consists of the beginning, the middle, and the end of the alphabet. Truth doesn't change. If it was true yesterday, it will be true tomorrow because Yahweh is immutable. Just because society accepts something doesn't sway him. Yahweh doesn't care about his polling numbers. Yeshua rebuked the devil. He told him, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Paul told Timothy, all scripture is inspired by God, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, reproof for correction and instruction in righteousness. Psalms 100 verse 5, it says, For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures to all generations. Psalms 119, 142, it says, Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is the truth. Here's something cool about the word emet. The aleph used to be written as an ox head, and it represented the chief, the strength, or the leader. The aleph represents Adonai. He is the beginning. The middle letter is a mem, and it refers to the womb of a woman. That's actually where the shape of the letter comes from. The tav, the last letter of the alphabet, used to be written as a cross, and it represents truth. So there's a story in the word. Adonai opened the womb of a virgin woman and brought forth truth, who was sent to die on a cross. How beautiful is that? Even the name of the woman with the womb was Miriam, whose name both starts and ends with the letter Mem. Interesting that Mary, as most people know her, is known for what came from her womb. So while I was picking through the letters to see what I could learn, I heard a question in my head. What happens when people take away the beginning of truth? See, when sinners come to most Christian, Christian churches, they're told, start reading the Bible in John. They're told, start with the womb and learn about the cross. When your pastor tells you that you're a New Testament church and you don't have to go by the law, then you don't have the whole truth. You have part of the truth, but what is a half-truth? I mean, we've already read the verses that say the truth endures forever, including every one of your righteous rules. Would your pastor take the position of the enemy? If someone told Yeshua we don't need to go by the law, we don't have to speculate on what he would say. He'd offer the same rebuke he gave the devil. No, man lives by every word of God. There is a way that seems right to a man, but where does that lead? What are you when you remove the beginning, the aleph of the Bible from the truth? If we take a look at the word, we highlight the aleph, and we delete it. You know what the word is in Hebrew? It's dead. That's what you are when you remove the beginning 
of the truth of the word of God. Come out of her, my people. It is time to get out of the churches that have replaced the truth with a message that leads to death. The wages of sin is still death. And the New Testament still defines sin as the transgression of the law of God. That's in 1 John 3, 4. So if your pastor tells you you don't need to obey the law, then he is leading you into death. And now you know the truth. And the truth will make you free, but only if you respond to the message. Paul said, it is not the hearers of the law who are justified before God, but the doers. So what do you do? You read your Bible from the beginning and obey God. Keep the commandments. Anyone who says they know God but doesn't keep the commandments is a liar. That's what 1 John 2, 4 says. It's not my opinion. So what is it going to be? Truth or death? Thanks for watching.